All right, so good afternoon. Today is Friday, uh, February 24th, and we are in ES2110 statics. So we are working our way through the material. And if you take a look at our Moodle page, you'll see that the topic for today is video 16 and that we're meeting face-to-face -face or by Zoom. So if you're here, welcome. And if you're out in Cyberland, welcome as well. Um, but we have both of those things going on. Uh, we have homework number three that was due on Monday, and most of you have turned it in. So I'll make sure to get that graded. I always like to wait a couple of extra days just to see if anybody else um, turns it in. And of the 10 people in this class, six have turned it in. So I was just going to give it another day to see if I get a little bit more. And so right now we're working on chapter four. So one thing uh, that I had uh, noticed is that the textbook for chapter one, two, and three are uh, posted to the Moodle page. However, the textbook for chapter four is not posted. So if that's um, I will I will get that posted, but if you need it sooner or if I don't get it soon enough, please remind me and I'll make sure to get that ready for you. All right, so today uh, we're talking about section 4.3, or that's where we are right now in terms of the schedule. Uh, we're talking about equilibrium in three dimensions. So I just kind of wanted to do a quick overview of what we've done uh, so far. The first thing that we did was we started looking at uh, forces and balancing forces in vector directions, so summation forces x, y, and z equal to zero in order to maintain equilibrium. And then we started to examine moments as well. So we've done two different sorts of moments. We've done moments about a point and we've done moments about an axis. Uh, one of your classmates and I had a discussion yesterday about moments, uh, what about moments about an axis, concerning moments about an axis. And he was asking about a particular problem where there was a frame. I'll just draw this really briefly, but there was like, um, if you look at the axis, the coordinate system, um, and there was a frame that went from, kind of came out like this. And it, there was an axis here from, I think, point A to point D. And there was a force pulling up on this. And it asked for the moment of this force about this axis. And he asked the question, what would be the significance of that? Well, the physical significance of that is an axis like this could, for example, be a hinge. So right here, if I take a look at my textbook, let's see if I can show this here. Um, no matter how I push on this, unless I break it, this is the only place that there's going to be a moment affecting the motion of this particular object. If I push on it with a sideways force, I'm not really going to get much bang for my buck. If I push on it with something perpendicular, then I'm going to get more of a moment. But that's sort of the physical significance of finding the moment about an axis. So in this case, where we have forces acting um, on this frame, and then this diagonal that they're asking for the moments about from that force or from one of the one or two of the forces, what we're really doing is looking at the projection of a moment onto an axis because of some physical constraint. Another, another reason could be aside from a hinge, it might be a weak spot in that frame, something that that's where it's going to fail. So you wanna know what the moment is gonna look like on that location. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, the rest of that that we had discussed was the fact that if you take, like this is axis AD, and you wanna find the moment about AD caused by, I kinda of think this force was called B sub H, okay? The first thing is, this moment, because it's a projection, is a scalar. So it's just a magnitude. It is not a vector. And we find that by evaluating the determinant lambda AD dotted with R cross the force in BH. 
Okay, so if we look at this mathematically, our cross uh, VH, these are two vectors crossed with each other, that is going to produce a vector. But mathematically, when you have a, a vector, this lambda, the unit vector along AD, and dot it with this vector, a, that's a dot product, which turns out to be a scalar. So those are just some of the ideas about it. Now, the other part is this R can be any vector from the axis, in this case, AD, uh, to a point on the line of action of the force. So that means that you can choose R based on convenience, all right? Now, for example, here's the line AD that I'm taking the moment about. And here is the line of action of the force. So you could choose R to be this from just A to B, or you could choose it to be A to H, which would be very much more difficult, or you could cho choose it to be a D to B or D to H, or any, in other words, any point on this axis to any point on the line of action of this force. Now, as this becomes the evaluation of a determinant, I can't write this and talk at the same time. It's I should put that. It's okay, we'll do that. F B H Y F B H Z. Okay. When you evaluate this determinant, um the fact that it's it's nice to choose a row, for example, R that has a couple of zeros in it, because then when you evaluate that determinant, you can use that row as your multiplier row and you eliminate a lot of crunching math. But the other point is, is that this builds in the directionality. In other words, R cross FBH, if you think about the right hand rule, is going to be perpendicular to both R and FBH. So in other words, if R and FBH um, exist in this plane, then the cross product of those two things is going to be perpendicular to it, either in or out of the plane, one way or the other, but it has to be perpendicular. Um, so what this does by using a little bit of matrix math, uh, you simplify the crunching of the mathematics for yourself pretty significantly. So that's just kind of the short the short story about a uh, moment. Yes, Max, do you have a question? Lambda. Okay, let me put that back up on the screen. Yes. Lambda is, let's do this. Lambda AD is the unit vector along the axis that we're taking the moment about. In this case, that axis is the vector AD. Okay. So you would find lambda AD by writing out, in order to find that it's kind of a three-step process. The first thing you do is you write the vector AD in IJK form, okay, from this picture. Then you find the length of AD using the three-dimensional version of Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so that would be ADX squared plus ADY squared plus ADZ squared, All right? And then finally, lambda AD is going to be the vector AD divided by the length of that vector AD, okay? And so it's also kind of equivalent to directional cosines of AD with the different axes. So in this case, a has an X component, if this is the X axis and this is the Z axis or the other way around, maybe it's the X, I can't remember. I can't remember which one is which, but if this is Y, AD is in the bottom of that uh, coordinate system. So AD has no Y component, the Y component is zero. So that's the, 
components divided by the length. You got it. It's exactly right. So, like, let's just say, for example, I wonder if I could find this problem in the text. Give me just a second. Let's see. I think it was in section 3.3. Let's find out. I don't think it's 3.2. Let me try that. Hang on. And three, what I just said, 3.3 .3 and 3.2 just corresponds to what's on our Moodle page, just from how many pages I could uh, post up there. So it's not corresponding to section of the textbook. Ah, there it is, 3.57. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. So let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do vector AD. Uh, let's do, let's do the work for AD, okay? Um, so I'm going to just follow along in the textbook, and then I'm going to write it out, and then I'll project that to the screen. So just an effort to show both. Okay, so if we want to find lambda AD for problem 3.57, okay, the first thing we do is we write the vector AD. So we start at point A, moving to point D, and we give the links going from in the particular coordinate directions. So here on the textbook, from point A to point D, we can see in the X direction, we move to the right a total of one meter. So it's one meter I, like we talked about before, in the J direction or in the Y direction, it doesn't go up or down. So the vector is zero in the J direction. And in the K direction or the Z direction, we go from point A to point D, we go back negative 0.75 meters K. So when we look at this problem, this is what vector AD looks like. Okay, so then the next thing we wanna do is to find the length of AD which using the Pythagorean theorem would be the square root of the squares of these components. Okay, now the one thing also, if you think about this with length, it makes sense that it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, right? It's still longer if you have a bigger number here. So what that means for us is that if you think about it mathematically, you have negative 0.75 squared. And so therefore, um, Therefore, it's negative times negative, which is a positive, all right? So um, let me see. I did not bring my calculator today, so I'm going to just pull up a little Excel spreadsheet overkill for doing a multiplication problem, but uh, let's see if it will do that for me. There you are. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with a blank worksheet. It's very slow. <laughs> okay, there we go. So what I want to do is I wanna do the components. I know that one squared is just one, but I'll just do that one times one. Oh, I need to say equal. And I probably should share my screen, just a second. Hang on just a second. So let me do this. All right, so in this cell, I have one, let's see, one times one, which is one squared. Second cell, I have zero times zero, which we know is zero. And then in the third cell, I have negative 0.75 squared. Here at two. Oops, I had to get another forensic design. I'm so tell me that error. Hang on just a second. Equal. There we go. All right, so that's 0.5625. So then if I add them up, I get that number. And then I wanna take the square root of this number. Um, so I can say equals, I think it's SQ, yep. Square root of SQRT of cell A4. 
And my whole answer, the length of that vector is 1.25 meters. Now you could easily do that on your calculator. I, you don't have, I was just like, like I said, way overkill for, but I just don't have a calculator today. So there you go. So, um, so anyway, so we have 1.25. So if we go back to our work here, yeah, you know, yeah, there's, we just have two students today. How are you doing, Dan? Good, good, good. So, yeah. Um, so now to finish off this work, when we want to do lambda AD then, we know that that's equal to vector AD divided by the length of AD. So lambda AD is going to be one over 1.25i plus zero over 1.25j minus 0.75 over 1.25k. All right, and then if you think about it, this is, if each one of these is a quarter, if you reduce this, this is actually going to be four over five. And this is going to be zero. And this is going to be minus three over five. Okay. Now, the other thing is, if you notice the top, the numerator is meters and the denominator is meters. So the unit vector is dimensionless, which it should be. Okay. All right. So is that helpful? Does that make sense? A lot of people get really hung up on this. This is like a traditionally difficult thing to get over. Uh, I got the sense of like the word means mathematically, but uh, what, does it, what does lambda AD mean? Sure. Oh, great question. Okay. What well, lambda AD means physically? Let me go back and share my screen again. All right. So let me do this. Okay. So if we look here at this drawing, AD is the vector from here to here, right? Lambda AD is the vector along AD that has a length of one. So in other words, it's a projection that has a length of one, just like the I vector is a vector in the X direction with a length of one and J and K similarly in the Y and Z direction. So Lambda AD is the equivalent just in a random direction. The reason that we do that is because when you, when you multiply something by one, it doesn't change the magnitude. So when you're doing vector math, or excuse me, when you're doing uh, determinants and matrix math, what that does is it allows you to project, multiply something into a direction without changing the value. So you're getting the magnitude that's the same along that particular axis. So yeah, because think about a vector having magnitude and direction you're assigning the direction to it by using lambda AD and you're not changing the magnitude because the length of lambda AD is one. Pretty cool, huh? It's also, um, and when I visited with your classmate about this, it's a little perplexing uh, because there is an entire body of mathematics that studies this, which is called linear algebra and matrix theory and it's not typical we don't even really we have it on the books here but we don't really ever teach it it's becoming very untypical for an engineering student to take that course so when you look at the math and you're like um you know it's like you're, we're sort of introducing it in this algorithmic way because we're not really explaining we don't really have the background to explain how that works so what i would say to you is I'll do a little bit of this. Just a second. Let me stop sharing. I'm over here. All right. When you set up this type of a structured number system, which is called, in the most general form, is called an array. An array just means that you have numbers in particular order. Okay. So it's composed of rows, which go across, and columns, which go up and down. Okay. Um, this particular kind of an array is called a determinant. And a determinant is structured like this to do this perpendicular thing that we were just talking about, where R cross F is a cross product. So just like with the right-hand rule, we know that the, the cross product of two vectors is perpendicular to the two. And then we take that vector, which is the, the total moment, 
basically R cross F, and then we project it onto AD. So we, like I said, in theory, we don't really, we haven't really explored that math and it's a different subject. So we're sort of like saying, here's a little bit of math and remember the right hand rule. And then will you accept it on faith that that's what's happening? It was like how much uh, of the cross products. Like yes, the yes. Perfect. That's beautifully put. How much of the cross product goes here? It's exactly right. And that term is projection. So it's a projection of the cross product onto the axis AD. Excellent. You said it much better than I had said it. So that's very, that's very, very good. All right. So that's what we are working on right now. Um, so like I said, in a, uh, let's see, in, let's go, let's take a little quick look at the schedule before we move anywhere else in yeah, just a sec. So going back to our Moodle page. Okay, so uh, this week, we have one more week before midterms and the midterm exam in here, we can take that midterm during this class period. I would like you to give yourself two hours to take it. So like, if you don't have a class at noon, you could take it from noon till two, or if you don't have a class at two, you could take it from one to three, but I will give you other times during the week that you can do it. But I just want everybody to have a fair shake and to have two full hours to take the exam. So the exam is proctored, but if we can't proctor it face-to-face, -face, I can proctor you on Zoom. Uh, so we have those options. And then, but I will be here next week. I will be here during midterm week. It's not next week, it's the week after next. So, um, but I will be here so I can proctor you face-to-face -face in class. I can proctor you face-to-face -face in my office or I can proctor you on Zoom. So we'll, we'll make that work with your schedule. But in a perfect world, we would be finished with homework three and then we would be finished with homework four by next Friday, which is March 3rd. And then the following week, we'll do the midterm exam. Now the midterm exam is gonna consist of four problems, one from each of the chapters that we've covered, one, two, three, and four. Um, and even though chapter three and chapter four are much more involved, all of the problems are equally weighted, okay? So in other words, the problem from chapter one is worth 25% of your exam score as is the problem from chapter four. Okay, so um, the other thing is you get to bring in study sheets so you can have a sheet of paper like um, a sheet of engineering comp paper like this, and you can write anything on it you want. You can write as small as you want, front and back. The only thing you can't do is use somebody else's handwriting or photocopy things. It has to be in your handwriting, okay? But you can use that, so you shouldn't have to memorize anything. I mean, there's enough to know without memorizing. And if you miss a fact, if you don't have something when you take the midterm exam, you can ask me and I will I will tell you. You know, I mean, obviously I won't tell you like how do I work, how do I work a moment problem in three dimensions? But if you if you're just missing an idea, I'll I'll help you with that. So, you know, so um I really try on the midterm and the final to test for proficiency in the material not looking for you to have flashes of insight or monumental gains during an exam. That's not the purpose. The purpose is just to see what you've, what you've mastered during that part of the semester. And it'll be very much like the quiz. The quiz is shorter, but the way that I, I like to see things broken up into steps, do a free body diagram, write out your, um, you know, your assumptions. If there are any, there really aren't often in statics. Um, and work the problem in a logical fashion. So even if you don't get the answer correct, you can still get a great deal of partial credit um, if I can follow your work and if your work is logical. All right. All right. And then uh, March 10th is Friday of two, week, two weeks from today. That will be the end of the first half of the semester. And then we'll have spring break. So over spring break, you will have no work. But nothing gets started again until after spring break. Then on after spring break, we will come back 
and we will and I, I will have dates posted here by the way so you can if you want to take something outside of class there'll be several days here that you'll be able to do it but I don't have the times posted yet um anyway so after spring break we'll come back on the 20th and the thing I noted here uh I wanted you to see the videos are a little bit they can be a little bit out of order the reason is is because I'm I skip chapter five then we go to chapter four, then we go directly to chapter six, seven, and eight, then we come back and do five and nine. And the reason for that is the math involved in chapter five is very similar to chapter nine, so the two build on each other, and it's more based on integral calculus. So the classmates who are not as far ahead in math, uh, it's helpful to them because we can stay in vector mechanics much longer until they're up to being comfortable with differential calculus or with excuse me with integral calculus so that's not much integral calculus i mean if you if you're in calc two you'll be it's it's not that big of a deal but if you're in calc one we need to make sure everybody's got the same skills so anyway so we'll do chapters uh six seven eight have another quiz in april then do chapters five and nine and have a final exam and that will be it so all right, so do you guys have any questions for me? Yes. I have a question about the homework. Yes, please. So, for example, in homework two. Yes. The problems that uh, you asked us to do. Okay. I think you already looked at the procedure and everything, so I better get the same question. Okay. Let me see. Homework number two. Submit work for quiz one, submit homework two, right here. Hang on, let's see if it'll actually pull this up. There we go. All right, let me share the screen. Okay, so here are the problems for chapter two. Okay, and which, what did you have a question about? So on the main page, you posted the problem. Oh. No, no. Oh, do you mean like right here? Yeah. Okay. This is just okay. I understand what your question is. No, the homework problems that you should do are listed in that submit homework. Um, these are just problems that I've worked out over um some period of time where classmates have had trouble with different problems and so i've just either worked out problems or set up problems just it this is just a help for you it's just a guide in case you're not in case the problems aren't making sense but you don't have to do anything except for what's posted under the submit button so you don't need to do 2.6 well, 2.6, 2.21 here. Let's see what this listing has here. 2.6, 2.21. Submit. See, here's 2.6 right there. So you would do that. And here's 2.21. So yes, you do hand them in. But the problems that I've worked out are just a guide for you in case you start getting... It's What it means is, is that in the past, I've had people confused about those problems. So I just wanted to work them through for your benefit. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So what other questions do you guys have for me? No? Are you enjoying the weather? <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? There was a storm a few days ago. I know. It was... Um, I was in Cheyenne when that happened and we got just, it was just, it was, the wind was howling and the wind was blowing the snow around and the snow was coming in. So I don't think you ever get used to it. Yeah, no, it's horrible. <laughs> we missed the email saying there were no classes. So we have to be more. <laughs> <laughs> Freezing to death the whole time. Oh my gosh. So yeah, it's uh well, I always tell people. So, are you? Where are your, are your homes warmer than this? You don't, or is it way, yeah, warmer. way warmer? Okay, there you go. So, well, I was born and raised in Southwest Montana, and it's actually colder there than it is here all the time. And it snows all the time. It snows nine months a year, 
Um, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's, it feels like it. But um, I always have people say, oh, then you must be used to it. It's like, no, you just learned to hate it earlier. <laughs> so it's just from a younger age, we get cross. <laughs> That's it, exactly. So no, it's kind of horrible. So, well, and you know, the thing is after it goes on for a while, if it goes on for several days and then like sometimes your water will freeze and your car won't start and then, oh, then it gets even worse. So anyway, but good. You guys are, you guys are troopers. You guys are, are, uh, are tough learning how to brave the cold. So, <laughs> so. Yeah.